Hello and welcome back to another video in my series on working with the Graph API with inside of Power Automate. So specifically, we're gonna be looking at the Microsoft Graph API and what kind of capabilities we can use within it, tapping into various Office products, online Office products, tapping into SharePoint, tapping into Azure Active Directory. There's lots of interesting things that we can do with the Graph API. And we're gonna take a little pause from the Power Automate side of things to explore the Graph API by itself for this video. And we're gonna do that within the context of the Graph Explorer. So Microsoft has provided this nice UI for you to be able to explore the Graph API to learn more about what is possible with inside of the Graph API. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. For those of you that are new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you're notified whenever we have new videos drop and hit that like button if you're enjoying this video series that I started. I'll put a link below to the first video I did in this series and you'll find a few other links in the description as well that will be beneficial for today's video. So the way that we're gonna get started today is I have a web browser open and inside the web browser, we are going to go connect into something called the Graph Explorer. Again, you'll find the description in the description a link to the Graph Explorer, which will take you to the site that I am pulling open right now. The Graph Explorer is, as the name implies, helpful for you when you're trying to explore what the capabilities are with inside of the Microsoft Graph API. Now, when you first go to the site, there is a sample account that can be used. In fact, you'll notice up in the top right, whenever you hit run query, if I were to select run query, it will return back results for a sample account. If you look below, it's for a sample account called Megan Bowman. So you can kind of explore here and you can see what things are possible without you even having to sign in with this sample Megan Bowman Bowen account that was created for us here to use. However, if you really want to explore using your own tenant, then you would go to the top left hand side and select sign in to Graph API. And this would prompt you to sign in with your tenant account and you can start to explore your data with inside of your tenant. So if I selected sign in to Graph Explorer here, this would prompt me to sign in. I'm gonna sign in with the admin account that I've been using for this demo tenant that we've been using. So by the way, any GUIDs that you see on my screen, they're gonna be useless later on. I'm gonna trash this tenant later, but I'm gonna go ahead and select this demo account that we're going to be using. And then from within inside of the Graph Explorer, I can start to tinker around and see what kind of queries can be run by exploring some of the sample queries we see on the left-hand side of my screen. So for example, if I hit the My Profile Query, you'll notice that on the bottom of my screen, it's gonna give me some details about my admin account that I'm signed in as. So it tells me the name of the account, the email address, and it also has an ID, which as we go through this video, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that ID because we're gonna need it for some of the other queries we're gonna run here in a few moments. But as we're doing this, think about this in the context of Power Automate, I would likely wanna capture this ID, similar to what we did in our first video, and then use that ID for various things within inside of our Power Automate solutions because that ID is gonna be an important parameter into some of the other queries that we're going to run. So for example, if we go look at some of the other queries that are available to us here on the query samples or the sample of queries, you'll see that there are other types of interesting queries that can be run, including ones against things like Microsoft Teams. You'll also find some that are interesting that you can run against OneDrive, OneNote, Outlook Calendars, Outlook Mail, You'll find some that you can also do against SharePoint lists and SharePoint sites and even information against users like your Active Directory users. So there's a lot of interesting queries that you can look at here as far as samples. And I, again, would consider the Graph Explorer as a way of learning how to work with inside of the Microsoft Graph API. So for our example, we're gonna go ahead and try and run some queries against Teams because that is actually the overarching problem that we're trying to solve through this video series is how do I add in Teams users to a private Teams channel? So first of all, I wanna see what Teams does my user have access to? And so if I look into the My Teams section of queries, I can see that I, there is a query here called My Join Teams, and if I select that, it will return back any of the teams that I have currently been joined into. So I can see there are two teams channels that I have access into, one called YouTube, and then the other just called Contoso, which is kind of my general one. And if I were to actually bring that over, if I were to bring teams over here, you would see that 
Inside of my Teams instance, I have a Contoso team and a YouTube team that I have access into. And that's what we're seeing here with inside the Graph API. You'll also find that there are these IDs available and what those IDs are displaying is the ID that's associated with that team. So if I wanted to explore more about my YouTube team, then I could uh, copy the ID column provided right here and then I could use that in some of the other queries that are available. There are parameters that allow you to pass in the ID of a team and then you can pass in the ID of a channel and you can kind of use all of these different elements together. So for instance, maybe I wanna see something like uh, the, the channels of a team which I'm a member of. So show me the channels that are within inside of this team. So if I select that query on the left-hand side, I can go up to the top left, uh, top right, I should say, where you can see the query parameter found right here, where I would pass in the team ID, and by passing in the team ID, that would allow me to see the channels within this team. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here. By the way, I should mention, my queries are running pretty seamlessly right now. If you hit a roadblock that tells you that you have permission issues, you need to go under this section here where it says modify permissions. And I have already uh, gone into this section and turned on all of the necessary permissions. But if you're having issues where you're getting errors returned back, permission errors, you likely need to go into this modify permission section to be able to fix any kind of permissions issues that are currently set and you'll come through here and consent to be able to run queries using these certain permission levels that are required. All right, I've already done that. Uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up because you will run into those permission issues the first time you run queries before you've done that before. Uh, so you will need to go into that uh, section and consent to various permission levels. All right, so I pasted in to the query up at the top the team that I'm interested in exploring and finding the channels within. So if I run this query, it will return back the channels that I have with inside of my YouTube team. And you can see the first one here is the general channel. That's there with every single team you create. And then if I scroll down a little bit more, you'll see there's a secondary channel here called private teams channel for YouTube that I've created as well. Now you'll get some information about each of these channels. One, you'll be able to see here what type of channel they are, whether they're a standard channel or a private channel, you'll see those listed. And if I were to go back and over to my team site, uh, and I, let's say for example, added another new channel, so I can come here and add a channel, and let's make this other one a private channel as well. I could add another new private channel, and I can call this my live demo private channel. And if I hit create, it's gonna create that new channel and I will immediately see that channel now show within the queries that we run. By the way, you'll see the little lock symbol there indicating that they are locked or, or private channels. So if I go back to the Graph Explorer and run this query again, you should see now three values that appear here. And if I scroll down, we will see all three of them return back. That, uh, oh, let's run that one more time. Doesn't look like it captured that third one quite yet. Let's give it another second or two here but we should eventually see three separate Teams channels that are returned back, one public, one standard one, there it is, it's down on the bottom there, just need to scroll down properly. One general or standard one and two private ones, here being the one that we just created moments ago. So you're able to see the results of things that you create with inside of Teams rather quickly. Same account, uh, same works for OneDrive, same works for OneNote, same works for SharePoint list. That information is captured and brought back using the Graph API. Now, I could take this a step further and say, I wanna get some more channel information. So if I'm eager to learn more about this channel, maybe what I do is I actually do something like this. Let me copy out the channel here. I'm gonna copy the channel ID found right here. And I'm gonna take that channel ID and pass it into the channel info. So using the channel info query, I'm then going to pass in the channel ID right here. And then I'm also going to pass in the team ID to be able to return back some specific information about the channel we are interested in. And again, keep in mind, all of this could be done with inside of Power Automate by passing in values between queries, between tasks and actions that you have with inside of Power Automate. And here I'm able to get back that really it's the same information we had a moment ago, but now it's for that specific channel rather than showing all the channels. Now we're getting just the one channel we care about here. So really cool stuff here that you can do to pull out information 
Again, consider Graph Explorer as a great tool to learn more about how, uh, how you can leverage the Graph API and different things that you can do within the Graph API. This video was just designed to get you exploring that tool, considering what's possible with inside that tool. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe button as well to make sure you're getting more of these videos. This is just the second video in a series that we're covering. We're going to switch back in our next video in how we can use the Microsoft Graph API inside of Power Automate more specifically. So I hope you look for looking forward to those videos. We will talk soon about how we can learn more about using the Graph API inside of Power Automate. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in our next video.